Okay, in the last video, we customized our brush, and now we're playing with brush settings. There's my brush, because I went to edit, and I said define brush preset after making something on a thousand by thousand pixels. And I'm using brush settings, which you can find under window, to play with the shape dynamics, making it pin pressure. I can give it a slightly bigger minimum diameter, right? And this gives me kind of nice edges that flare into each other, right? There are just so many different things you can play with. And the better kind of tablet you have, you can even have like tilt sensitivity and twirl sensitivity. And you can have your brush like spit off paint as it twirls. But these are really basic tablets where we just want to really work with the, with the size. Okay. So with those brush settings, I can now bring that brush over to my original. And that's what a normal brush was. If I move this up to around 160 pixels where I was before. And if I even pick that same color, holding down option, now the brush looks like this. So is it a huge difference? It will be when we get to how it looks finished up, right? Because right now, this looks very digital, very MS Painty, you know, with all those really sharp edges. And so if I now actually do my painting, because this is just my sketch, if I do my base painting with this, this brush, it's going to be a little bit better. So let me uh, erase these strokes from my base painting. And now I'm using my brush. You remember it's at the bottom of my brush options, but then it needs to be customized with brush settings if I ever want to change anything. But I can change the opacity of it. It's at 70% right now. Uh, I'm going to keep it at 70%. I'm going to keep it about the same size. Though I could even go a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'll go a little bit bigger just to do this quickly. Okay, now... How do I steal color for my base painting? I just hold down option and I can select from any color that's in Photoshop. It just changes my foreground color selection. And I just want to get rid of the whites. And by not like using just black or using my color selector, I'm going to find some unusual and interesting colors to mix. I definitely recommend stealing colors from, from photos or images, especially from art images. It's just a lot more fun. What is this looking like? This is what a base painting often looks like with this kind of brush. I am not zooming in. I am not doing a lot of detail. I'm trying to get rid of the white and block in major shapes. And I'm definitely using a tablet, not my mouse, so I, I can control the width of the brush just with the pressure. I remember my brush is only ever putting down the color I select at 70%, so if I want it to be darker, I need to go over it again. And I'm kind of squinting and seeing where the highlights are, where the shadows are. And I'm stealing colors, not from the photograph, because those are going to get really boring. So it's nice to have, you know, this paint ex painting example to do it too. But it just depends what you're going for. So I'm going to use more kind of Matisse, like Fauvist color, French Expressionist color here. to have some fun.
I like this artist technique of kind of doing segments. Might be a fun thing to try with digital. But right now I'm just blocking in the shapes. You can steal colors from yourself. You can even make a little palette off to the side here of colors you want to be sure you use. You can even blend them with each other a little bit. I do this all on the base paint layer. Don't forget brown. Brown is a good color, and it's hard to find in these color selectors. Purples. Chromatic grays. You also want to establish what your darkest dark is going to be, and it's nice that that's not solid black. And if your lightest light isn't pure white, that can be helpful too. All right. Let's keep going. So my reference, even though it's not the coloring I want, my reference has all the lighting that I want. Shows me what, how light is hitting this pose. How the anatomy is working. You can see how different this is than digital coloring because I'm getting beyond my, my sketchy lines really quickly. Scrubbing things in. For base painting like this, if it was oil paint, you'd use a horsehair brush. And they often call this technique scumbling which I like that term. It's kind of like you're falling and fumbling at the same time. Stumbling and fumbling. Scumbling your painting. Now this is not finished painting. This is just the base. And it will get refined on layers on top. It would be a mistake to try to do all your painting in one layer because then each time you paint you'll be covering up and erasing data as much as you're adding it. And the reason digital painting is so repetitive and takes long <laughs> is because you're trying to build up a lot of individual interactions and pixels, right? Just like individual brush strokes. You don't want to erase them as you go by painting over them and replacing them. Instead, you want to start layering them up. And I, I've got to put some random colors in there every once in a while, like these greens. Otherwise, it all just kind of gets muddied towards realism. There's too much beauty and potential in our heads to be limited by realism. But I acknowledge you have to kind of show yourself that you can make something look like something before you're psychologically free to experiment with it. So 
But digital painting, in my view, is not best used to match photography. Photography is its own discipline. Just from this base painting, you're going to realize pretty quick that some parts of your painting are more interesting to you than others. So for instance, the paws have not been very interesting to me. So I need to take special care to pay attention to them, to deal with this idea of finish, that I want every aspect to feel considered and worked on. Because I'm just going to be doing a lot of mindless painting. But I have to sometimes remind myself, oh, you got to define these paws a little bit. And so the first step is just to get, get rid of all that white that's coming behind. If you want white, you need to paint it in. Like around the nose. And usually for my refined paint layers, which come next... I'm actually going to fill in the background, not with white, but with gray. Because when you paint on white, everything looks darker than it really is. Right? But try to pay attention to the energy of these kind of quick base color layers. And to the overall contrast, like where shadows are, where shapes are. Notice I'm using a big brush. I am not zooming in. I am not going into details. I'm trying to do as much as I can with really basic tools. So we work general to specific as we go. I'm not switching from the brush tool at all. And as long as there's white left in the image, I still have more base painting to do. But where I can, I'm going to try to fill it with interesting color. And maybe even throw some colors in there that aren't in the reference, like the stronger red, stronger blue. So I have them if I need them. And then it doesn't seem like I'm all that interested in the tail, so I need to get interested in the tail before I can move on from my base painting. It's a shadow underneath. Let's give it some interesting color. I like to have the, the color selector here because every time I steal a color, it will show it. And then I can always modify it gently if I need to. Like I like this, but I want it more yellow. If you are a painter, you'll have favorite pigments. Naples yellow, which is pretty much like this, is one of mine. Payne's gray, which is kind of like, like this. It's one of mine. So you can kind of recreate the pink colors you like to purchase at the art store and use. And here you don't have to pay for them. So fur is fun because it's very, very much, it's very painterly. It's very much like brush strokes. But you can do the same thing with feathers. You can do the same thing with scales. Just try to have some energy in your strokes and don't be too concerned yet with it. 